Hey guys, Thub here. I've got a project today and I figured I'd share so I could give you a quick video on what to do with a small electronic device that either won't turn on at all or turns off randomly. Let's get into it. Now I know a handful of the people who see my videos are seasoned DIYers and uh, to, if that's you, this may seem like a pretty obvious kind of a fix, but everybody starts somewhere and I feel like a lot of people don't realize quite how much stuff they can totally handle on their own if they've never seen it before. So, going forward, if you have a device that is not powering on properly or shuts off randomly, the first thing to check is the power input, the little power plug-in. Move it around a little bit. If it's got a lot of play or if the thing turns off and on when it's doing that, this is how to fix that. It's difficulty level one. Difficulty level one half. You can do this. And all you're gonna need is a screwdriver. If you don't have one of those, uh, you could probably find one if you just walk around for long enough, come back when you got it. Uh, and a soldering iron. If you don't have one of these already, you should if you wanna be doing any sort of electronic repair. So pick one up. I'll link one in the description. Actually, I'll link two because you can get a cheap one or a more expensive one. The only difference with the more expensive one is you're gonna have um, temperature adjustments and how long a thing's gonna last. Personally, I think things are a lot cheaper if you only have to buy them once, so I recommend the, uh, the nicer one. I'll usually just turn it all the way up to the max because it'll heat it up a lot faster, but you don't want to keep it there or it'll just start burning things, so after it's fully heated up, you might want to turn it down to a four or a three. And they'll probably send a couple pennies my way if you do buy one from the link below at no extra cost to you. So that's nice. Now, we'll start with the PS1 because it's small and fits on the screen nicely. Um, unplug it, get that sucker open. Now, it turns out this one has one of those stickers that covers one of the screws for um, a tamper proof blah blah blah. So, we're actually going to use a third tool, another one that I would recommend having. I've used this thing a lot more than I thought I would. I actually just bought it so I could uh, use it for one project and then return it the next day. But, turns out, it's great. Should be nice and heated up. There we are. Not avoiding any warranties today. Let's grab the overhead and take a look. Now here we have the humble PlayStation 1. The uh, power plug-in is right there. So, I've never opened one of these up before. Oh, comes right apart. Okay. A lot of shielding in there, but we're not going to bother with that because I can already see the problem right here. So there's the power connector, and if you look, you can see that this solder here is all cracked off the board. Get that soldering iron turned on, like we should have five minutes ago. In a few moments, it'll be hot enough to fiddle with. All right, I think we've got a good temperature now. Yep, that's pretty hot. Um, now, I don't have a lot of soldering tips because I'm not a professional, but one thing I know is the idea is to heat up the workpiece, that's the metal that the solder is supposed to stick to, not the solder, because the idea is to get them to bind to each other. And uh, it's not gonna happen if you're just melting the solder but not heating up the piece that you wanted to stick to. We're actually gonna add a little more. There we go. Would you just look at that? No more cracks, nice flow, and not bridged, that's important. Oh, here's a fun little tool. I've just got a bottle that I cut off and threw some, um, uh, like a, a Brillo pad in there. You need something to clean the, the solder off of your soldering iron. They make, like, specific tools for this, but, eh, it's not something you need to spend money on, because it's pretty easy to make your own. I'm also a big fan of lead-based solder because it just works better, it melts better, it sticks better. But it is toxic, so you don't want to breathe in those fumes. Let's put this thing back together and see how we did. Alright, three should be enough to hold it together while we test this out, right? Get this bad boy in there. We've got power. Oh look! Sturdy as a... Stable as a... Tight like a tiger. I'd also suggest having a screwdriver that's the right size, otherwise you'll strip or just chew up the, uh, the screw heads and either that'll make it really difficult for yourself or just make it obvious that the thing has been opened. 
Um, not that this piece has had a warranty for a long time, but people still like to see it. I mean, yeah, you can tell, but whatever. That is a beautifully working PS1. Uh, it's not a beautiful PS1, but we'll just wipe it off, clean it up, that'll be great. Um, now, this one we're kind of just swinging for the fences, because it doesn't necessarily flick. It does a little bit of power cycling when I fiddle with the, the thingy, so this might work and it might not. I guess I could end the video here, but you guys are already here, so let's open it up and have some fun. Now, I'm not the least bit worried about making this look like it's never been opened before, so we're going to speed things up a bit. Also, it's got a lot of screws, so... Can I help you? What are you doing? Well, I'm trying to fix a keyboard that won't power on. Okay, so I took a bunch of stuff out, and um, there aren't any broken solder points, and nothing seems to be scorched, so I'm not quite figuring it out. Uh, I'm just going to plug it in and uh, wiggle stuff around. I'm going to press the button and start wiggling things, and you tell me when it turns on. Okay, hold on, what about now? Yeah. See, for some reason, now it's working. This had nothing to do with me. I don't know why it's working now. I'm gonna take the switch out and clean it. Well, all right. Got it all back together. And what? Oh, are you serious? <laughs> yeah, seems to work more or less fine. Um, that's the thing with electronics is sometimes they just get gremlins. I know that's not a very professional explanation, but I'm not a very professional thub. Um, that's not true. I'm the professional. Anyway, if you've never taken something like this apart before, but it's not powering on or it's shutting off randomly, there are some things that you should check. Um, it's not that scary. You can't hurt anything just looking around. You can hurt things by breaking things when you're inside, so be careful. I don't think I can sell this given that I never did figure out what's wrong with it, so I can't really say that I fixed it. Um, but I can rehome it, and I'm sure I can find someone who will love it, despite its quirks. A lot of that going around. Thanks for coming by, despite the quirks. Leave it better than you found it. Keep doing the thing.